What is going on, all you Pokemon collecting maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and I am so excited to get this video out to you all. I have been thinking about it and noodling on it for so long. I was like, how do you take 20 years of collecting experience and put all of it into one YouTube video? And I really struggled with it because I think this is one of the most important and impactful videos that I can possibly do because, like I said, I've been doing this for a long, long, long time. It started 20-something years ago with the 1981 Topps Joe Montana PSA seven rookie card and um I fell in love with it as soon as it came in the mail, and I have been very involved in the collecting community ever since. And I started off in sports cards. A year and a half ago, my daughter came to me and she said, hey daddy, I wanna do with Pokemon cards what you do with sports cards. So then obviously my focus shifted and I just couldn't be happier. This Pokemon community is amazing. All of you are amazing. And I think we have tons of upside and tons of opportunity from a collecting, enjoyment, and uh, investing space. So I'm excited to share these tips with you. Listen, at the very end, I'm gonna share with you my number one tip where I have gotten 30% of my collection for free. That is not a lie, that is not an exaggeration. I've got 30% of my overall collection for free. And not only that, but they also provide me with the most, I don't know, excitement and joy and memories. And it is just, that 30% is the part of my collection that means more to me than anything else. So I'm excited to share that with you guys as well. Down at the bot, look, we're rebranding Pika Pika Papa. So uh, my beautiful, smart, intelligent wife was like, hey, you know, I think we're we're really serious about this. We're really enjoying the channel. So why don't we level up your, your uh, I don't know, your mascot a little bit. And you guys know we're always talking about playing chess when everybody else plays checkers. So check it out. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up while you're in the process of dropping a comment. It goes a long way for helping the algorithm. Let's me know that you guys appreciate all the work that I do. And um, we're trying to grow to 1,000 subscribers. So with all that being said, let's jump into these tips and tricks, okay? Here is something that I do struggle with. Listen, you have to invest, collect, and buy with your brain and your heart. I choose a little bit more of my brain than my heart because my heart can certainly lead me astray. But at the end of the day, you have to use a little bit of both, right? I am a data guy. You guys know I always present you Technicolor Dream Coats of Pokemon Awesomeness where it's just filled with all these datas and percentages and charts and changes. Um, which is one big piece of the puzzle, but you also have to make sure that you're investing in what you love. If you're just investing with your brain, you are going to fizzle out, right? You, If you don't love what you're doing, you're gonna fizzle out, you're not gonna find the joy in the hobby that you need, because I'm telling you, somebody who's been doing this for 20 years, it can be a bit of a grind at times. As much as I love the cardboard, there are some times where it's just a bit of, it kind of drags on. And uh, in order to find real long-term success, you gotta be committed to it, you gotta be consistent, you gotta do it over the long run, so you gotta have your heart in it. A great example of this, right, and I talked about this in at least two of my last five videos, is that Pikachu Secret Rare from Crown Zenith. That was a card, my heart was all in it. I really wanted it. As soon as it came out, I was like, I'm gonna spend $100 and buy it right now. My brain was like, uh-uh, you gotta wait. You have to wait, just be patient. You know that this is gonna come back down to earth. You know that paying $100 for it is absolute lunacy. Even if you send it off and get it graded, it's it's not gonna, you're not gonna see the return in value, so wait, 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 which I have. I still haven't purchased the card, but now, since I will use my brain, I know that there's gonna be plenty in the market. I know I'll be able to buy it in the high teens, and I'm still gonna find as much joy of doing it. The other thing is, right, I did a video just the other day on uh, Scarlet and Violet. Like, my heart really wanted me to buy a booster box simply because I thought it would be cool, but my brain was like, it just doesn't make sense. There's gonna be plenty of booster boxes for Scarlet and Violet for the foreseeable future. You don't need to jump in and buy it right now. You know, you are doing this channel, you are doing all this research, you know there is way better ways to invest your money right now than tying up a ton of funds in Scarlet and Violet booster boxes when you could be investing right now, sending the cards out, getting them graded, flipping, like there's just so much more you should be doing with your money right now. Um, so that's the big thing. You gotta make sure that you have a mixture of your brain, a mixture of your heart. Your heart can certainly lead you astray, but you always gotta listen to it too. So um, make sure you're always doing a little bit of both, right? Next one right here, consistent, with purpose, and this is an incredibly important slide, and that's why I put it as the number two one, because what I wanna say is a lot of people will talk about setting a budget, and I am always cautious when I use the word budget because in, in the business space, you know, in, in you know, even when you're setting a household budget, like we spend to the budget. Everybody spends to the budget. The US government spends well above the budget. But you know, if a business has $10 million in budget, they usually spend $9,999,999. I give myself a spending limit every single month because a spending limit seems a little more harsh. It seems a little more aggressive, like, oh, you don't want to hit the spending limit, right? Um, 
but I am always investing in the market, whether the market's up, whether the market's down, I am always consistently putting money into the Pokemon market. And in my previous 19 and a half years, you know, I was putting it into the sports card market. And that is because you never know when you're gonna hit the top, you never know when you're gonna hit the bottom, but that doesn't mean that I don't ebb and flow the way that I invest. So if I have a spending limit of, round numbers. If I have a spending limit of $100 and the market's getting super, super frothy and I can't find any value in that market, I am not going to fit a square peg in a round hole and shove $100 in because I have a $100 spending limit for the month. That's just crazy, right? Like I am happy to spend $50 and hold that other $50 for the next month. Maybe then I find a better product or I find more value or the market starts to correct a little bit. Then I have $150 that I can invest into it. Okay. So here's what I'm talking about. Always be in There are people who are going to say the sky is falling. You are always going to, we live in a very alarmist type world where everybody's going to say the Pokemon's going to zero. I see all these channels. Pokemon's going to zero. Vintage is going to zero. Modern's going to zero. Sealed products going to zero. Like this is a junk wax era. There's so much out there. Listen, be consistent in what you do. And I promise you in the long run, you will be okay. I've done this for 20 years. I have seen a lot of things. I am way richer and way better off because I have been consistent over the last 20 years versus going through these crazy times of investing and then taking a sidelines and um, you always wanna be investing. So be consistent, but be consistent with a purpose, okay? Next one right here. Focus diversity. So I I differ a little bit here. You know, I, I I watched a lot of top 10 videos and these are the best tips and tricks for Pokemon investing. And they tell you to focus, either be really focused in on modern or focused in on sealed or focused in on vintage. And I don't believe in that at all. Now, I would suggest that you don't try and invest in Funko Pops and comics and Pokemon and uh, Dragon Ball Z. Like, I think you should pick a genre, pick a product, pick an avenue and stick with it. If you're like me and you're sticking with Pokemon, then I think it's really smart to invest in some vintage, invest in some modern, invest in some singles, invest in some graded, invest in some sealed product. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, not all products are gonna move in lockstep, right? We're gonna have a time where vintage outperforms modern and when sealed outperforms graded and vice versa of all of that. But if you're well invested and if you're well diversified, it's fine because at the end of the day, the overall trajectory of the market market in my mind is going to be upward and to the right. We don't know what particular products are going to drive that overall trajectory, but as long as you're invested in all of them, you're going to be okay. And additionally, when you do that, when as a part of this channel, if you follow me, if you listen to all this stuff, if I, you see all the information that I'm presenting, like you're going to learn about a lot of different opportunities. You will miss opportunities if you don't have education on that. So like, if you never invest in sealed products, if you never invest in vintage, if you're only investing in modern singles, then that's all you're gonna know. So there could be this great run on, you know, vintage cards and you won't even realize that you're gonna miss this incredible opportunity because you're not focused on it because you don't have any knowledge about it, right? So when you diversify, you force yourself to learn different areas of the hobby and it only makes you a more well-rounded collector, right? Think about the stock market. Like what if you only invested in the energy sector? Yeah, you would have years where you crush it, but there's gonna be years where REITs outperform, there's gonna be years where bonds outperform, there's gonna be years where, you know, uh, I don't know, commodities outperform. There's there's all these different sectors, but what you do is you invest in a well-diversified basket of stocks and that's kind of the way I look at uh, Pokemon and sports card investing as well. So in the sports card space, there were years where I invested more in vintage. There were years where I invested more in modern. There were years where I invested in players who were already in the Hall of Fame. There were years where I invested in players who I thought were eventually going to get into the Hall of Fame. That's what I'm doing right now. I have a pretty big Hall of Fame collection. So I'm looking for players who I think are going to get in the Hall of Fame in the future. I'm buying their cards now with the anticipation of them uh, being worth more later down the road when they get in. So focused diversity. I don't want you to think diversity means you just shotgun it out and you invest in everything. I want to make sure that you have focused diversity, but this is incredibly important. So stay that, keep that in mind. Very next one right here, quality versus value. These are two very, very different words, right? When you think about quality, quality is in my mind, PSA 10. That's the highest quality, right? Then you think about PSA one, that's the lowest quality. Value, value is how much something isn't necessarily worth, but how much is the perceived value of something? How much does the market uh, determine that it's worth? So when I think of this, you can have a high quality, low value card. You can have a high value, low quality card. Like there's all different things. I will tell you this. <clears throat> The number one thing that has allowed me to grow my collection and grow my net worth was something that I realized very early on in my collecting um, journey was that I wanted to buy the highest quality, highest value cards that I possibly could, even if that meant I went two or three months without buying anything. Okay, I just talked about you always want to be investing in the market. And what I would do is when I had very little funds to invest at the very beginning of this journey, I would say, okay, I really want to buy this $150 card. I have a $50 a month spending limit. So I would wait three months and I would buy that $150 card. But I knew, hey, instead of 
Instead of just trying to fill this need and instead of trying to fill this want and desire to buy cards, I need to make sure that I'm buying the right cards at the right time. And all, I will tell you this, hands down, all of my high quality, high value cards that I invested in all those years ago have appreciated at a much higher rate than the other low value, low quality cards that I invested in. Some people say you want quantity, I say you want quality. I'm gonna tell you right now, I have cards that I tried to fit a square peg in a round hole. Maybe I got tired of not buying cards for a while. Maybe I thought, hey, you know, I just really need to get this card from 1960, so I'm gonna buy it in a PSA 6 when I know my ultimate collecting goal is a PSA 8. I have regretted every single one of those. I don't have a single high quality card that I regret buying. So quality versus value, you wanna find both, even if it means you gotta pump the brakes a little bit and wait a little bit longer. I promise it's gonna serve you well in the long run anticipate and welcome change listen think about everything that has changed and happened over the last 20 years it is absolutely crazy there's been bubbles and recessions and wars and all kinds of geopolitical and macroeconomic there's been all kinds of stuff that has happened that has fundamentally shaped and changed the sports card and pokemon card market it is it's just crazy. You and I have to anticipate these changes. That doesn't mean anticipate what's gonna happen. Nobody knows what's gonna happen. The only thing that you and I know for sure is something will happen. Something will change. Something will throw this whole snowball of momentum that we have going in the Pokemon market. It is gonna throw it up on its head. I don't know what it's gonna be. I don't know when it's gonna happen. We just have to be ready for it. I have had some of my best purchases in the sports card market during the times of mass pessimism, right? There are people, there, you, there is no shortage of doomsday people out there who are gonna tell you that the sky is falling. There are people out there who say, Pokemon Modern sucks, Pokemon Vintage sucks, like, oh, sealed product, there's so much of it, it's not gonna be worth anything. Listen, take a breath, which is hard for Pika Pika Papa sometimes. Understand that the long-term trajectory of this hobby is going to be strong. We don't know what products are gonna be the best. We don't know what changes are gonna happen, but we're going to educate ourselves. We're gonna stay at the forefront of making sure that we understand hobby trends, hobby insights. That way, whenever these changes do happen, hey, we're okay. It's fine, it's not a big deal. If my collection value drops 20% tomorrow, is it gonna suck? Yeah, but guess what? That's a paper loss because I know over the long run it's gonna bounce back and it'll be worth way more in the long run than it is what I paid for it. So anticipate change welcome change when you're in the middle of the storm it's hard to see the light like when everything around you looks crazy and there's thunder and there's lightning like all you see is the doomsday scenario i promise you it always turns around i promise 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 we will be the ones playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers and while everybody else is hitting that panic button we're going to be making some educated buys and we're going to be ready to capitalize on it and then in the future we're going to be far 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 richer in a far better more enjoyable position because of it so anticipate change and welcome it and get ready, here we go. This is how I've grown my collection substantially over the years without investing a penny. For every Christmas, for every birthday, for every holiday, for every milestone, whenever somebody wanted to do something for me nice, guess what? They said, hey, what do you want? And you know what I said? I want sports cards. I want a PSA graded NFL Hall of Fame rookie card. I had a list of 10 of them that was always ready to hand to them. Hey, these are ones that cost between 50 and $150, or if they wanted to spend more, I'd give them a higher one. I have always shared my love of collecting with everybody who is willing to listen. I have 30% of my collection that was given to me over time through Christmas, through birthdays, through all of those other events that I just mentioned. And the, the best thing about that, what I love about that is, I mean, I have slabs upon slabs upon slabs. Most of them that I've purchased, I don't, you know, I just, I don't remember the purchase. I don't remember anything. I just kind of slide through them. But guess what? I always stop at the cards that were given to me by somebody. I always stop at the cards that marked a milestone. Like these are significant events that I am going to remember forever. I have girlfriends who are long gone. They're married, they have kids, like we haven't seen each other in years, but they gave me cards in the past and I still have them in my collection and I still look at them and I remember them fondly. Well, most of them I remember fondly, but, <laughs> but anyways, it's cool. And someday I will pass these cards on to my kids. And a lot of these cards are going to have stories behind them. Or a lot of these, I'm going to say, do you remember giving this to me when you were seven years old? Or, hey, your mother gave this to me when I was, you know, when I got a new job and when I got a promotion and hey, she bought this for a hundred bucks and look at it. It's worth a thousand now. Like, this is just, it brings me such 
great joy and it brings the people in my life great joy because at the end of the day if you're going to spend money and give somebody something you want them to really enjoy it and find value in it and think it's the coolest thing since sliced bread and that is one of the ways that I've been able to grow my collection I encourage all of you to do that even if you just say hey I want packs of Pokemon cards like how cool is that I hear all these amazing stories from you all in the comments down below about how you and a loved one or you and your friends or you and somebody you went and you ripped some packs and you pulled out all kinds of awesome cards I've heard about Moonbrians I've heard about Lugias I've heard about all of these awesome cards I remember those events I remember the stories you share with me so I can't even imagine how impactful they are uh, with you and your loved ones so share Share your hobby with those you love. Share the hobby with those around you. At the end of the day, we want as many people to be involved and as many people to be enjoying this hobby as possible because that's what's gonna fuel the long-term growth. So, with that being said, I hope you guys found value in this. This is a ton of fun. I know it's a ton of content. I don't normally do these monologue videos, but it was the only way I could get this across to you. I hope you guys have an epic day.